This is a Nikon 7500 and probably one of the most underrated and forgotten cameras today. The 7500 is a crop sensor camera that positions itself just below the Nikon D500. The camera has many of the same features as the industry leading D500. For me the Nikon 7500 is the perfect mix between manageability and image quality. With all the new mirrorless cameras, this seems like a forgotten camera within the Nikon segment. My main camera is a Nikon D810, a full frame camera. But if I want to go lighter, the 7500 is the perfect companion. Of course, all the F mount lenses fit on this camera. I can also perfectly exchange my extra batteries between the D810 and the 7500. 500. You can expect a sturdy feeling and an ergonomic camera from the Nikon 7500. It has a deep grip with a thick rubber coating that is extremely secure in the hand. The housing is also weatherproof and compact, but not too cramped. The weight is 720 grams. This is slightly heavier than its predecessor, the D7200 and noticeably smaller than the D500. Furthermore, this camera has also a built-in AF motor so that the older AFD lenses can also be used as well. Like for example this beautiful 180mm f2.8 and the 55mm macro Nikkor. Special lenses that are no longer made but available very cheaply second-hand. Or this 50mm AFD that allows you to photograph very compactly. These lenses can't use the autofocus system of the new Z cameras, but this 7500 pairs perfectly with these vintage AFD lenses. The image quality that this camera delivers is outstanding. With its 20.9 megapixel sensor, which is exactly the same as in the D500, you can capture beautiful images with a high dynamic range. The 7500 has an enormous hidden potential and can therefore deliver the same image quality as the D500DX flagship. The autofocus works very well and quickly, but it is obviously not at the level of the D500. Although in most cases you will hardly notice it, only with subjects with a lot of movements such as photographing swallows or hummingbirds, the autofocus can struggle. But again, for the most part, the autofocus functions perfectly. Autofocus is super fast and accurate, even in low light. Nikon says it's sensitive to minus 3 EV, which is moonlight. The 7500 also gets the group autofocus mode previously used on the D500. This allows you to use multiple AF points to track a moving subject and works perfectly. For light metering the 7500 uses exactly the same technique as the D500 and in my opinion the 7500 exposes more correctly than my full frame camera the D810. The metering uses a 180,000 pixel RGB sensor and feeds information into the AF system. This is intended to help the camera understand how a subject moves through the camera. The sensor is also used for face detection and subject recognition. In addition to the usual matrix, center and spot metering modes, the Nikon 7500 gets highlight weighted metering. This is my favorite metering mode and prevents bright areas of the image from becoming very white or let's say clipping highlights. This allows the user to get the most out of the sensor's dynamic range when post-processing RAW files. The 7500 has user 1 and user 2 programmable presets on its top dial to set for instant recall of settings, something the D810 and D500 don't have. 
this camera has only one card slot. As a result, this camera could not be used professionally. So they say. It should be noted that in the 20 years that I've been using digital cameras, I've not once had a problem with a card causing problems during photo shoots. And then the time an SD card didn't work was before I could make a recording. So I had never lost one photo. But if you absolutely want a camera with two card slots, it is better to take the Nikon D500. But again, I have no problem with one card slot. Professionally, I also take photos of my paintings, which I then send to my clients. As a test, I photographed this painting and placed the photo in a mailing to my customers. The colors and details produced by the 7500 match the original artwork very well and this is how I sold the painting to an American art collector. The test was successful for me that I can use this camera professionally as a reproduction camera too. The large tilting vivid screen is a huge plus for this camera compared to its predecessor. In my view, the screen provides an accurate representation of what your photos will look like. You get a live preview of exposure, white balance and depth of field. In addition to touch to focus and touch to focus and release in a live view mode, the touchscreen can be used to operate menu selections and scroll through images during playback, just like on a smartphone. The tiltable screen comes in very handy for macro photography, where you often use a low point of view, or when you want to take a photo from an unusual point of view. With this tiltable screen, you don't always have to lie on the ground to take a photo from a low point of view. Furthermore, this camera just feels very good, even if you have big hands. The 7500 can of course film in 4K. However, you should take into account that an extra crop of 1.5 is applied here. Although that can be useful if you film wildlife for example. Like other recent cameras, the 7500 includes Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. It is designed to make a permanent connection to a tablet or smartphone via the free Snapbridge app for Android and iOS. A 2 megapixel copy of each image should normally be sent during this connection. I never use this function but it can be useful for those who want to. This camera has a built-in flash. Sometimes this is useful as a fill-in flash or to use as a trigger for larger flash units. Remember, the D500 does not have a built-in flash. You can clearly see what difference a built-in flash can make in this example. For example, if you have a weak lighting, a flash can give you that extra punch and reveals more details in your photo. The built-in flash can also work with Nikon's radio-controlled advanced wireless lighting system. This allows you to wirelessly control external flashes. The 7500 can shoot 8 frames per second, which is two more than its predecessor. Please note you cannot place an extra battery grip on the 7500 if you wish. Some like to shoot with a vertical grip, then the D500 is of course the logical choice. Speaking of batteries, this is a DSLR and means that you don't have to worry about battery power for at least 950 shots with one fully charged battery. Here are some more pictures taken with the 7500. A very nice camera with which you shoot nice images. Image quality is very good, with a 20.9 megapixel sensor delivering detailed images at low ISO settings and controlling noise down to about ISO 6400. Camera produces usable files even at settings down to ISO 51200. Nikon's matrix metering generally does a good job. It tends much more towards underexposure, which is more 
desirable than irreversible highlight clipping. Conclusion In short, this 7500 is a solid performer with proven DSLR technology. This camera is all about the joy of photography. A no-nonsense camera that is always there for you if you want to take pictures. The 7500 is a solid all-rounder and a great upgrade for owners of the D3000 and D5000 series cameras from Nikon. Or like me using this camera alongside a full-frame camera. Do you also have this camera or are you thinking of buying it? Be sure to let us know in the comments. That's it for now, see you in the next one.